Hey guys, right before we get started here with the Dean's Fish Room Tour as a master breeder, I want to know from you guys, would you rather see me do a special with him on German Blue Ram breeding or angelfish breeding? We're going to put a card right up here that's going to drop down a poll. You can vote there. And then in the comments down below, let me know what other fish you'd like to see him specialize on because he's bred zebras and other plecos and apistos and all that kind of stuff. But I know for sure one of those two, either German Blue Rams or angels, uh, should be the focus for him because he's made so much money and he's done so many of them over the years that it seems like a no-brainer to me. So here's a question I'm not sure I've ever asked you, well, I've asked you probably, but not on camera. What fish room is this for you? So uh, how many fish rooms before this have you built? Well, technically, this would be my third. Wow. Um, my first one, if you want to call it a fish room, was in a one-car garage in a condo. It had the washer and dryer at the end of the garage. Yeah. And so I put a wall five feet out. Mm hmm And then I had a rack across, you know, a turnaround from the washer and dryer, and there's a rack of yeah. tanks there. Um, oh, wait, so it was in with the washer and dryer. I assumed you were separating dryer. the rest out from the washer no, and dryer. No, because I had to still park the car in the garage. I see. It was one of the covenants of the condo. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the, the second one was the one that was more amazing than this one. Is there any pictures or video of that ever? It was before digital. Dang. Um, so, I mean, uh, you know, there's, there's one picture of it in Dick Gow's book. Okay, was it one of his discus books? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have some snapshots here and there. We might we might see if we can dig those up. We'll put them in the video because yeah. that'd be cool to see. Um, but it was it was like I mean I built the house. Yeah. With the fish room in mind. Wow. So it was off of a garage. It was um, twenty feet by twelve feet. It had nine and a half foot ceilings. Cement okay. floor, drain, water, its own hot water heater, and um, you know, pretty much bread. And, and I had tanks ranging from five gallons to 180 gallons. How many tanks were roughly in that? A little over 100. Because uh, I can only imagine what you, what you cook up with, what do you have in here, 40 or something like that? About. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Over double that capacity, you really had to be cranking some stuff out. I, I was I was shipping discus three times a week. Yeah. I mean, I, that was my main thing back then was discus. Sure. I, mean, I tell this story to other people because they you would tell eat that me. one whole, you know. So. And didn't you say there was like the giant Bolivian ram or something like that? It it was a giant German blue. Oh, ram. giant German blue. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, but it was more the size of a, of a great big Bolivian ram. Nice. Huge deep body. You know, the when are you, you going to develop that? You're working on the angels. Who knows? The, you got to leave that life legacy I, of the right. gi Dean's giant German blue ram. We, we all lost them at about the same time, within, within the same month. They all just, yeah, I think it was too much inbreeding. Oof. Now the ram I want now is the black ram. Those are, I saw them about 18 months ago. I paid for a very expensive How to Breed Guppies and Angels journal by a, like a, I think it was like a Slo Slovakian company. Yeah. And they, so I got access to his personal Facebook and he would take pictures when he'd go visit. Right. And he would be like, but you've never seen this before. And you're dang right, I hadn't seen that before. Yeah. Have they ever made it stateside yet? No. What I've heard is there's a fish farm in Japan, I think, okay. or China, one of the two, Japan or China, that paid a guy to develop the fish for them. Makes sense, yeah. And, but I haven't seen any, any on the market at all. They're, they're, I, I think they're going to be smart about it. So what they're going to do, like the, the fire red egg is easy. I think they're going to get it in mass quantities, hit the market, make a boatload of money, and then they'll be around. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be crazy. Nice. These blues, I love these blues. Yeah. What what temp do you run the Rams at? Eighty four. Until I until I sell them. Like those those are a little bit lower. Right. Yeah. Once before they go to the store. Yeah. And if so, obviously the people that are gonna see this video are all home hobbyists. 
What temperature do you recommend they keep their Rams at? 84 or higher. Or higher. Yeah, you could go, I mean, a lot of people will keep them at 86, yeah. 88. I think that tends to burn them out quicker. Uh, yeah, I would, I mean, um, which I is see that. Which is good for, you know, a shop owner. Right, I'm going to tell everyone to keep them at 95. Yeah, um, <laughs> but um, they won't grow quite as fast at 82 or 80. 80 right. Uh, and they won't get quite as big. And then what's your, your favorite, like, feed to, let's, like, let's say you're going to spawn them, which you obviously are spawning a ton of them. Uh, what's your, like, okay, I'm going to feed them this, and this is going to get them to spawn, and all that kind of stuff. Food. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think it's more the water chain. I mean, I use, I'm a fish food idiot. Yeah, aren't we all? Um, That's one I haven't fed yet. They're, the food of choice is frozen bloodworms. Okay. Because I, I felt like I was running into problems. If I got too heavy-handed with the bloodworms, I'd bloat them. Yes, you can. Yeah. Because I was getting them from a wholesale, and they're always coming super skinny, so I'd hit them with right. a ton of worms. And then I'd, I'd go from too skinny to, oh, I've bloated them to death. Right. And, and I've done that. You can overfeed them easy. Yeah. And then, and then brine shrimp, and then I use all sorts of different granules. Brine shrimp's my go-to now. I, just, I feel like you can't overfeed the brine. Like no, I said, it's it enough goes, laxative. It just goes through them. Yeah. And one of the things I've been working on is, if you notice, a lot of the rams that come into the shops, the first rays on the dorsals are not extended. Right, yeah. That's, that's they're supposed to be extended. Yeah, the, like at least the second one, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah the yeah, second the ray. One or two or three. Right? Yeah, yeah. So when I select my breeders, I try to always pick ones that are extended. Hmm. And if the females happen to have a few that might or I'll pick those two um, because um, I think that trait should be in the fish. Yeah, I would say so. It's a pretty, yeah. Yeah. And so do you always pick your breeders from like store stock or do you start with wilds first or? Oh, you mean, no. If I was to. So like, let's say, let's say you have nothing in this fish room and you say, okay, I want to breed some rams. What, what's your process? I would go to another breeder. Okay. Uh, find a breeder that's breeding them. Um, the rams that come into most stores have been hormoned. Right. If they come out of Malaysia, they're all hopped up. I mean, if you look at this, this tank is a good example. This is all one batch. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of different sizes in there. Yep. Most of the, the females are, you know, about this size right now. Yep. They're ready to breed right now. I mean, they, right. if you watch the behavior, you'll see them on the top of the sponge or something trying to fend off an mm -hmm. area. Um, the males will get bigger, but if they're raised in a more hormone situation where they kind of take that away, they all grow at the same right. rate or they sort them by size. Right. So um, if, if we were to net out a bunch of the big ones, then, then some of the sleeper males would have a growth spurt. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's tends to be what I do because I don't have the tank space to sort of size. Sure. This drain is all the way over to there. So it starts here and wraps all the way around the room? Right. And if you remember yeah. when I was talking to you about how I had to go in behind the stand because there wasn't a room. Yeah. That's the drain, so it's flex. It flexes behind that 2x4 and then back out. And it keeps enough grade to do it? There, well, yeah, because from here to there, there's about a 2-inch drop. Okay. And, and then it, it didn't sag anywhere like the middle of the wall no, or anything? No, because the flex is just about that long. Oh, and then and you've then got it. Back to rigid. Okay. Right, right. I'm sure that was great to crawl back in there and work on that. Concrete. Yeah. I had to chip concrete out. <laughs> That's some dedication. And I had to do the same thing. Did you tell your wife about that? I got I to gotta chip into the concrete to... Uh... <laughs> no. She, she doesn't even know how... I, so I had to do the same over here. Is that so you can siphon? Is that what that little... No, that's for just in case. Oh, okay. You know, I could pop the cap off, I could drain into it. Yeah, I could. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Like, you could siphon I these tanks could. up here. Yeah. That's uh, smart. So... I want my fish room to be this big and look this good. No. Not, well, let's trade. Four times this big. Let's trade. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I could make yours this good. Yeah, that's... 
No shortage of rams, which is good, because I need lots of rams always. Yeah, and I've got electric blue started again. Finally? Yeah. You're killing me. You're still having four pairs of yeah. the angels? You know, and I just actually just cleaned their tanks and they laid eggs and ate them. And they ate them? Yeah. Oh. So are any of these fry that you've raised up at this point? Or all are these second generation. So these are all all the way, wow. Yeah. I can't believe it's been that long since I've been here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, time flies. What's your favorite pair? I think those ones are real nice down there. I like that pair too. That one? Okay, yeah, yeah that's where I was like. Yeah. There's a lot of deep orange in those. Right. Yeah. And those suckers, they will bite you when I go to pull the slates. Yeah, so had, real good parents. I had blood one time on my finger. No way. I'm serious. From an angel. From an angel. It bit me. Wouldn't let go, and my finger was bleeding when it came out, wasn't it? I hope you took a picture. I didn't. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, so going back to that, that one drain is all three of these yeah. rocks. Then the other drain is those. Yep. And then there's a third little one that comes in that's those two tanks. <laughs> really? How do you make it so it won't backflow? Check valves? No, it will backflow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought about a check valve, but it'd have to be a, one of those flapper ones. Yeah, yeah. They fail over time, but right now you have no anti-fail, so. But, but, look at, they can't, it can't, it'll, the bucket will overflow before the tanks do. Okay, so it's this top bulkhead right here. In the back. Okay, yeah. All right. Does that make sense? I, I, yeah, in my mind, it was coming in low on the bucket, and so yeah. I was like, how is it not? Yeah, so you're fine. Yeah. And so... Water lines, are they actually going water in with a flip of a switch or are you manually doing tank by tank? No, I go like, um, okay, so I think I sent you a picture of this. Yeah, that came out nice. Okay, so this is a set of mixers. These yeah, are, hot and cold. These are gate valves and yep. those are just on off. Okay, yeah. So, and thermometer. Yep. Right? So this is hooked to the green hose if I'm doing a major water change. Okay, right. so that right. you can go tank by tank as much as you want. Right. Yep, and and I can just that makes a lot of sense. So you can do your zebras and you know, stuff you just like turn that. Turn it on here. Yep. Uh, it it sets in there and it flows into the bucket. Okay. For adjusting temperature. Yep. I use these to adjust temperature, but I'm always going about 78, 80. Yep. Or 84. For Depends the on the zebras. tank. Yeah. And I adjust the temperature, and then I can just go, you know, literally. Tank to tank with that. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's what that side's for. That's super nice. And then this side. Oops. Hang on a second. This side. This is the hot cold mixer. Yep. Uh, How much was that one? Seventy bucks. And did you get it from the plumbing store after all? No, I got it online. Okay. But it's it's the. I mean, I actually bought three to get this one. Oh no, so it took so, you $200 to get one <laughs> that will work for I your application. Two off of eBay. Yeah. But the problem is they don't come down low enough in temperature. Mm. This is one that will come down all the way to, I think, 60 degrees. Wow. So it goes 60 to 120. Yeah, I feel like even mine at the store won't go much below 70. Well, yeah, most of them are 70, yeah. 80. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then this one, I turn on here. Those are just on. Yep. And so those are full on into the valve. Yep. This is the adjustment. Yep, that controls right? temperature, right. yep. So then, and these actually have a carbon block filter. This just has a sediment filter. So your, your logic is when you're doing them tank by tank, you'll dechlorinate? Yeah, if I, yep, if if you I want feel to. like. Yeah, right. uh -huh. Okay, so then we flip this on. Yep. Now, there's some stuff that's not used right now. Sure. Like this, what I'm setting up for that is a single hose if yep. I just want to auto water chain one. Okay, yeah. Right? Yep. Right? Drip it through for a while, yep. Yeah. Um, this one is just an extra in case I want to run water through the yeah. ceiling all the way down. Exactly. If you want to get another, yep, get another room going. And I hear these that. are the four racks. Yeah. And then that just drops into the bucket. So what I normally do is open that up. Get your temp right. And I, I don't really worry, but as long as it's in the 
77, 78 yeah. frames. That's warm enough, right? Yep. Close it. And then this rack, open that. It'll do all of every tank. Nice. And it's, roughly, like, let's say you leave it on for 10 minutes. How much water comes into a tank? Any idea? I have a better idea of an hour. Okay. Um, if I drain the tanks to a third, yep. in an hour it'll fill them all. All right. So So I usually let it run an hour. Yep. Um, and do you only do one rack at a time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's where, at some point, if I want to do celluloids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where that would end up. Yep, right in that line, which I, I do the, yeah, I automate it fully. Now, I did find one thing. So, I'm running through a lot of this type of pipe, right? Okay, yeah. It, what is that, like uh, It's just refrigerator like, tubing yeah, or something? It, it yeah, it comes in black. You know, uh -huh. Black, because I didn't want to see the dirt build up. Yeah. On, on this rack, I pump it back into that to come out. Mm-hmm. Um... But if you go on this rack, it just, I'm using it straight. Okay. Now here's the thing. That took a while before it started flowing, right? Correct. You had to pressurize or and something? Yeah, and it takes a while to fill the, all the half inch. Stuff. Yeah, the big tube, yeah. But if I turn on that other rack, this one off, it's like instant. It's flowing right now. That makes a lot of sense because just way less that you have to pressurize. and Yeah, and I bet that water stays in those pipes. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. So, so, yeah, you can really see it flowing in up there. Yeah. That's nice. And I can adjust each tank because these are little ball valves. Yeah. Is that from like the drip irrigation place or something um, like that? Those are... Um, oh, I think I got some from Gemco? Gemco. Yeah, okay. I've, I haven't played with them yet, but I got so, some. So these are barb barb. Yeah. But these into the pipe are threaded, so you tap the pipe. I got the threaded ones. I haven't tried them because they got rid of the metal ones. Like these ones yeah, right here that I really like, I they don't make them anymore. I know. Because I run my water through those. You can't... Because those have a gasket. Yeah, they do. Where, where those like that don't. Yeah. They so still those, sell those ones, but... I know, but those will leak. Dang. Yeah. Are these so, grow-out pairs? Yeah. Those, well, they haven't... I, mean, I feel like that one's really amazing. These are ones that I selected for my next pairs. Yeah, because that one really the one is right getting up, real right close. Yeah. yeah, we're getting real close to that black and no red white. we want. Yeah. yeah. That's... And see, the thing is, sometimes when I pick them small, because I pick these at dime size uh -huh. for myself, like, you see that one? how white it got right but when it was tiny it was all yeah it was a ringer for what you wanted this one's cool too i like him yeah or her it's a him yeah so problem in this is i think almost all of them are males i was gonna say look a lot of males in there but even yeah. so i might have to take one of those females even that'll help though yeah but you haven't actually seen the cool thing in the tank yet. Well, you may be, you're looking at it and haven't seen it. I, I can't see anything cool. Look at the pre-filter on the aqua clear. Oh, did you double? St wow. No. That's all one piece. That's all one piece. Where did you acquire such a thing? Um, from Gemco again. Are they? Wow, yeah. There's one up here too. They're just straight up making these. That's pretty cool. So, the advantage, I don't have to clean it as often. Yep. Right? The disadvantage is when you drain the tank down, you lose siphon at that point. Oh, yeah. But if you turn it off, it won't drain the box. Right. Right? But. In the 800 gallon tank. Yeah, I still think that's really nice. You can keep it way down, yeah. right? Yeah. And they make this, they make a 36 inch one too. Hmm. And what does like that one cost at Jimco? I think it was like, um, four, one, six, something like that. So about 11 bucks or something yeah. like that before shipping. That's and not of bad. Of course, I'm kind of anal because. Well, yes, we've seen your fish room. You know, locally, this is the only way I could adapt it. Right, I'm used to that. This is way better. So, I'm like thinking online, I'm thinking, this is ugly. 
Uh-huh. That really is. So I went online, and sure enough, 45 cents. Now, if you... You might even be able to find that in black, and if you can't, you could spray it black. I could paint it black. I thought yeah. about that. This piece of pipe over here I'm looking at, it's been affixed to the wood. Like, rigid <laughs> pipe, like, I just love how but everything... that's because it's full of water, and that, you know, that's the problem. That's... No, I know, I just, everything is like, no, nah, I better do that right now. Like... And, and you know, when you put, when you put these in, I learned this later, not at first, drill these into the frame of the tank. Yep. They stay where you want them. Yes, they do. And you can actually, oh, and you'll like this. I like everything. My best ram breeding tank yeah. is the five gallon up behind. Because <laughs> nothing can disturb it? I don't know why. There, there's a pair in there. I will literally completely tank that tank and scrub it completely clean. Yeah. Clean the filter, put the pair back in, they won't raise, and, and they won't raise the fry. They'll eat the eggs until the tank gets dirty. And then they know well, there's remember, enough. Remember our mulm. Yeah, session, I'm, right? I'm pro mulm. I, I, I am convinced so, fish won't raise up without mulm. Well, not won't, but that it's very, very beneficial. Right. So it gets all dirty, and then they raise huge batches of fry. I mean, like, that's one spawn. This one right here? That's one spawn. I mean, wow. Where, you know, my other pairs, nothing like that. Um, well, are you letting them get dirty? The other the other pairs that you do, or is it? Yeah, but for some reason, that five gallon tank, it just huh. worked. And it now is on the auto water change system. <laughs> so. Thanks for subscribing. On the left, we have our latest video. Make sure you check that out. On the right, we have more videos lined up for you, which we think you'll enjoy if you enjoyed this video. Down below, we have the Jimmy of Aquarium co-op channel. Make sure you check that out, and we'll see you in the next one.